All right, so in this lesson, I will be teaching you guys about arrays and and a word called static. So to start off, we have, I created a coordinate point class that has two integers, x and y, as every coordinate point, I mean, coordinate point does. And we have two constructors, an empty constructor, and a constructor with parameters x and y, and a function called do nothing. Now, to create, so we've dealt with different variable types like integer, which is signified by int, string, and uh, double, and stuff. And creating a class is also creating your own sort of data type. So inside of an integer going here, we have a coordinate point. So we're saying that this variable chord is a type coordinate point, which is uh, this. So basically, when I create a new coordinate point by typing the word new, we're creating a new class, which is this. So we do that by uh, saying new. And note that the constructor is also a function. That means the two parentheses must go after coordinate point because it is a function. Just like the constructor, the constructor can uh, contain parameters. And so can the, uh, so will the, uh, the function. So now that we understand how classes work, uh, to access a class, uh, you use a character dot. And to access a function, we can write the function name and then followed by parentheses, which signifies that it's a function. And parameters go inside here. Or parameters are variables that we can use internally in the function. And to access variable types like x and y, we type dot and we type the variable name. So this should be a review. And so yeah, now I'm going to talk about arrays. So let's just say I have a series of numbers, one, two, three, four, five. I could write separate variables. Uh, okay, wait, hold on. Let, let me put it this way. Let's just say I have five uh, students or five objects labeled one, two, three, four, and five. And each of them has like a point value. So initially they all start off with a point value of zero. But I can increase and decrease points if I'd like to. And I want to see like who has the most points at the end. So without the uh, knowledge of arrays, we would just create a variable for each um, a variable for each student. So student one, initially zero points, student two, student three, student four, student five. So now I can print out and now I can add students. I can add a score from a student and I can subtract and I can even just say I want to add five. And yeah, now I can print out student five at the end. This should print out five after it finishes building. All right, so yeah, it prints out five. And that's not a problem. But what if we have 30 students and we want to implement this? Now, I don't want to create 30 different variables. That would be a massive waste of typing and space. So instead, we can create an array. An array is a data type that allows you to store multiple different values inside one value, if that makes sense. So let's just say I have five values, one, two, three, four, five. And this entire chunk of data is stored in a variable called uh, array. So now, instead of so now to access an element in array, you would just need to type in the index that uh, the element is held at. So, for example, if I want to access one, I would type in array. You need these brackets, and then type in uh, one. If I want to access the third element, I would type in array three 
like that. But since programmers have to do everything the hard way, everything is zero indexed, which means that the beginning starts at zero instead of one. So this would actually be zero. Zero, one, two, the third element would actually be two. And this is a more efficient way of storing my students because instead of typing out 30 variables, I can just have an array with 30 positions at it and I can reference the student by typing in their index. So to create an array in Java, it's the same thing as, it's almost the same thing as creating a variable. So I'm gonna create a variable uh, called not an array and assign it to the value of six. Now if I do create an array, I can type in int and instead of, uh, I mean not instead of, and to create an array we would type in two brackets signifying that this is an array of the data type int. So every single element inside this array is a type int. So, and to create uh, an array, I can't just type in three because three is not an array of integers. We signify it by these brackets. So this creates an empty array. If I want to create an array with a value one inside it, five or one. And if I want to create four values, I can do that accordingly. If I, cr if I want to create empty, like tw 200 spots, I wouldn't want to write out 200 numbers. So there's an easier way to create that. And that's called, uh, we, we would use an new keyword just like how we would uh, do it for the coordinate po point or like creating an object we would use a new keyword so the int brackets array equals new int brackets but it gives us an error and because we need to initialize the size so since I said 200 we would type in 200 so this creates an array with a size of 200 so initially everything is set as uh, nothing, but there are 200 spots. So now we can say array of, let's just say two equals 14, just like how we uh, initialize or reassign a variable value, like not an array equals 12. We can do the same thing for elements in an array. We can also do, uh, we can also assign it like this. or like this, you have to have the new int keyword to override the previous array. And yeah, so one thing that I have to point out about arrays is that you cannot modify the size. So let's just say I have an int array and uh, the array only contains three values. I'm just gonna say one, two, and three. So this index right here is index zero. This index is index one. This index is index two because it's zero index. That means the beginning starts at zero and not one. I can access the uh, elements at array zero easily by typing in the brackets and then pointing to, towards the position, which is zero. This should turn one. Yep, and, but what if I want to access element three? There is no element three, by the way, so it would return an index out of bounds error. And uh, this means that we're trying to access an element that's not there. And while you might be thinking, well, why don't I just assign it there, right? In deck, I mean, array of three equals four. So now uh, it should print out four, right? No, it shouldn't because when we set up our array, we, we are saying that the array size is only three and it will never be greater than three. So that means if I try to access the fourth element in the array, nothing would happen. And if I try to set the fourth element of array to something, uh, an error would happen. I mean, an error would occur because you can't, because you've already defined the array as having a size of three. And that's the same thing if I do a uh, new int size of three. This is basically the same thing. There are only two, three spots, so you can't assign a fourth spot. So you can also have different arrays. Uh, they don't always have to be integer arrays. You can have a string array, and uh, 
it's the same format. You put the data type, then the two brackets, then the name, and the, init the initializer. String, string, 15 elements in the array. And the same thing, you can access an element that's outside of the array. And yeah, arrays are pretty simple and basic. Uh, one useful thing about this is that uh, you can also get the length of the array. So it's length dot length. That's the length of the array. Okay. So we can also have an array of custom classes like coordinate point. And the, the way we do that is by writing the class name coordinate point and then with the arrays or like the two brackets the name and then the same thing so now this would create an array of three blank coordinate points like that so what if I want to initialize array of zero to a new coordinate point since nothing is in here at first you would need to create a new coordinate point at this index the way we do that is by creating using the new keyword and then the constructor function. The same thing for here, but let's just say I want wanted to have a predetermined value of three and five, and we can do that because in our coordinate point function, we uh, created this custom constructor that takes in an X and Y value and it assigns it to our class. And let's just say array of two equals nothing, just to see what happens. So if I uh, print array of zero, which is uh, just our regular coordinate point, point uh, class, this would return some random letters and numbers because we're trying to uh, print out the class and that, that doesn't really do anything. But if we want to see like the X and Y values, we need to access the X and Y values from arrays of zero. So the way we do that is we take array of zero and now this is a coordinate point class. So we can do dot X to grab the x value from array of zero and then we can see the x value at uh, array of zero which would be zero because we didn't initialize it to be anything but if I did array of one we, we see that we already initialized the x value to be three yep but what if I did array of two what will happen we get an error and uh, specifically a null pointer exception because this code right here, it sets array of zero to a coordinate point. So we can just say that there's a coordinate point right here. It sets array of one to a coordinate point with an X value of three and five. So we can just say that, but there's still nothing here. When we're trying to access out this element, we're trying to access nothing. And that's why it returns a null pointer exception, meaning that there is nothing in the array that we're trying to, I mean, there's nothing in the value that we're trying to access. So that's why it won't work. So we can also loop through elements in an array or assign elements in an array. So let's just say I have an integer array of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Like that. So let's just say I want to print out all the values of that array. Uh, if we, if you guys remember that we went over loops in the last uh, video. So the way we do that, we're going to be using a for loop. We're going to print out 15 numbers or 15 hello worlds. We would have i equals zero, i is less than 15, and increment i by one every single time. And this would perform anything uh, inside lines 10 through 12, 15 times. So we can print out hello, and this would print out hello 15 times. So how do we do that but accessing the element of the array? So i is actually a variable that we can use inside our function. So what we can, we can uh, use that to our advantage by referencing a value of array of an, a value of an array by using the i pointer so if i print out this
on the first iteration i equals zero print out array of zero which is one on the second iteration i equals one print out i of one which is two it all it does that all the way up to the 14th iteration when i equals 14 print out i 14 which is the last element which is 15. so this should print out 1 through 15 or all the elements in the array yep but what if the array was uh 17. i mean yeah what if the array size was 17. this would still only print out this much because we didn't account for the 15th and the 16th element to the array so we have to change this to 17 but what if we didn't know the size of the array what if we didn't know the size of the array that's where the length keyword comes in we know the array dot length and this uh the length will return in this case 23 so we can iterate from value 0 to 23 so we can do that and this should print out all the values of the array yep like so and another loop that i'm going to talk about is the for each loop so the for loop as we've seen right here uh iterates through all the values of the array and java wrote a custom for loop that uh, allows you to do that easier and you can do for so we're going to create another variable just like we did with our for loop and we're going to call this element so for each element in the array so for int e which represents our element in the array we can print out the element so instead of uh, looping through the indexes this is going to loop through every single element inside this array like so all right and similar to lead to a for loop this doesn't have to be initialized there you can also have you can also do this for e in huh i guess you can't never mind ignore what i said you have to initialize it before you uh print uh, before you access it so unlike a for loop in a for loop you can uh, you don't have to initialize the variable in there so let's just say I have int i you can say i equals 0 uh, i is less than 15 increment i by 1 what I can just put i equals 0 and then leave this parameter blank I initialized it somewhere else but uh, unlike that in a for each loop uh, you have to initialize the variable in the first parameter. So that's the for each loop. Now I'm going to go over uh, briefly static, the keyword static. So when in object oriented programming, and especially Java, we're creating objects like this. This creates an object called coordinate point in every, I need to create a name, and every single uh, attribute is tied into this variable core so core dot x equals five core dot y equals five so cores x value is five and cores y value is five so we're creating class separate classes for this coordinate point but if we wanted to have a shared class and a shared method we can have we can put the word static so let's just say variable so i need a data type the static keyword always goes before the data type and after, and after the uh, after the like public private thing. So what static does is it it's shared amongst all classes. So so that means even if I created two or three classes of coordinates, all three of these classes will share the same value variable. So I can set or dot and instead of referencing it by uh, the object name we would reference it by the class name so coordinate point coordinate point dot variable equals 12 so static means that everything can access it it's shared amongst all classes so we don't need to access it from a direct variable we can access it from the class 
and we can similarly we can also print it out from the same class. And everything will be unchanged. It doesn't affect these three objects. Everything will stay the same. The only thing that changes is this variable, which will be shared amongst all classes. Similarly to data types, we can also have static functions. Uh, and instead of uh, referencing it from the object like before, we can reference it from the class name like that. It's static. And yeah, that's basically static types. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this class. Next time, I'm going to teach you guys about uh, array lists and more data types. Mm -hmm.